Good morning and welcome to our holy celebration of the Holy Eucharist here at St. Augustine's Chapel. Due to the severe weather, we have cancelled our service in person and we now worship online through this live broadcast. In spirit and in thanksgiving, let us worship the Lord. It is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, You are my disciples if you obey my commands. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are open, and from whom no secrets are kept, as is the host of our hearts, by the inspiration of your own spirit, as we may perfectly love you, and well be magnified in your holy name, who Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of God's love, revealed in word and sacrament, that has called to mind our sins. Like as the deer longs for water flowing streams, so longs my soul for you, O God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. May we come to your altar, O God, the God of our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Most merciful God, we, we confess have that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive what we have been, amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together the glory in excelsis. All glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. Let me sing, my beloved, the song of my friend for his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a fertile hill. 
he dug it, cleared it of stones, and planted it with red grapes. In the middle, he built the tower. He hewed the press there too. He expected it to yield fine grapes. Wild grapes was all it yielded. And now, citizens of Jerusalem and people of Judah, I ask you to judge between me and my vineyard. What more could I have done for my vineyard that I have not done? Why then, when I expected it to yield fine grapes, has it yielded wild ones? Very well, I tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I shall take away its hedge, for it to be grazed on, and knock down its walls, for it to be trampled down. I shall let it go to waste, unpruned, unduck, overgrown by brambles and thorn bushes. And I shall command the clouds to rain, no rain on it. Now the vineyard of Yahweh Sebaoth is the house of Israel and the people of Judah, the plant he cherished. He expected fair judgment, but found injustice, uprightness, but found cries of distress. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us stand. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 80, verses 7 to 15. God said by oath, bring us back, let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. You brought, you brought a vine, vine out, out of Egypt, Egypt. to you plant it, you drove out nations. nations. You cleared a space for it, it took root and filled the whole country. The mountains were covered with its shed, and the cedars of God with its branches. Its boughs stretch out as far as the sea, it shoots as far as the river. Why have you broken down its fences? Every passerby plucks its grace. Boars from the forest tears at it, while bees feed on it. God Sabaoth, come back, we pray. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine. Protect what your own hands have planted. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. The second reading is taken from Paul's Epistle to the Philippians, reading from chapter 3, verses 4b to 14. If anyone does claim to rely on them, my claim is better. Circumcised on the eighth day of my life, I was born to the race of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrew parents. In matters of the law, I was a Pharisee. As for religious fervor, I was a persecutor of the church. As for the uprightness embodied in the law, I was faultless. But what were once my assets, I now, through Christ Jesus, count as losses. Yes, I will go further because of the supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, I crowned everything else as loss. For him, I have accepted the loss of all other things, and look at them all as filth, if only I can gain Christ, he, and be given a place in him. With uprightness, I have gained not from the law, but through faith in Christ, an uprightness from God based on faith, that 
I may come to know him and the power of his resurrection and partake of his sufferings by being molded to the pattern of his death, striving towards the goal of resurrection from the dead. Not that I have secured it already, nor yet reached my goal, but I am still pursuing it in the attempt to take hold of the prize for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not reckon myself as having taken hold of it. I can only say that forgetting all that lies behind me and straining towards what lies in front, I am racing towards the finishing point to win the prize of God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Let us stand for the reading of the Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, and you have revealed to us the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Listen to another parable. There was a man, a landowner, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it round, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went abroad. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants, thrashed one, killed another, and stoned a third. Next, he sent some more servants, this time a larger number. And the tenants dealt with them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir. Come on, let us kill him and take over his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? And they answered, He will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will deliver the produce to him at the proper time. And Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and this is the Lord's doing, and we marveled at it. I tell you then that the kingdom of heaven will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce its fruits. When they heard this parable, the chief priests and the scribes realized Jesus was speaking about them. But though they would like to arrest him, they were afraid of the crowds who looked upon him as a prophet. This is the gospel of Christ our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Please be seated. A very good morning to each and every one of you. It is indeed crazy weather that we are experiencing. All right? In the last two or three typhoons, even at 
Signal number eight. It is as calm as we can see it today. I remember several weeks ago when we expected the typhoon, when I first came at eight o'clock in the morning to, to uh, uh, DBS, the sun was shining. And then all of a sudden, when the typhoon came later that evening, we still experienced some heavy rain in some areas, but at Pokfulam, where I was staying, no rain at all. Not even strong gusty wind. But then on Monday, we had the heavy black rain and maximum damage was done. So remember in our prayers for Hong Kong and its people, especially for those who have spent so much money to come to Hong Kong to celebrate their holidays. But we must also remember in our prayers, our brother Matthew, who went missing in the last three days. Let us also remember his parents as we meditate upon these words that God has given us today, and especially afterwards in our prayers of intercession. Now if we look at the parable, all three of them, including the text in the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah, in Psalms, and also in St. Paul's epistle to the Philippians. We are being warned in two ways. One, in Isaiah, where the owner of the vineyard had planted the best grapes. And yet, in the end, all he got was very sour grapes. And in his anger, he tore down everything, but did not uproot the grapevine. And this is interesting, because like any one of us, if the grapevines that we produce, that we have planted, doesn't produce good fruit, not only would we perhaps tear down everything, we would even pull up the vines themselves, isn't it? But in Isaiah, the owner did the opposite. He did not uproot, he did not uproot the vines. All right, he kept the vines and he stayed he tore down the walls, protecting the vines, so that wild animals will come and turn the place up, upside down. Why did Isaiah tell this parable in such a way? Well, if you are a farmer, like me, you know, growing up in a family that farms, and I've been called, oh, the grandson of the farm. And my grandmother would always say, oh, you have big feet. That's a farmer's feet, you know, not the feet of a rich man. And you would know that the owner of the vineyard did the right thing because what he planted were good quality vines. It just so happens that it didn't produce good fruit. So what he did is common sense to a farmer. Tear down the walls and allow wild animals to come in, uproot the soil, let the wild boars dig for worms, dig up the soil, loosen it, and let wild cattle come in to trample on it, especially when you have goats that have hooves, hooves that looks like this. And when they walk around in the soil, it would poke a lot of holes in it. And even allow these animals to eat the leaves and allow strangers to pluck the fruits. Now what this owner of the vineyard is doing is to allow the soil to fallow. The problem wasn't with the quality vine that he planted, the problem was with the soil. So he needed to uproot all of that and trample on it and allow the wild boss to dig it up to air the soil 
so that then the good vine can then have more oxygen, more air, and more water coming down through. But what is even more important is that the animals that came in to eat the grass and the leaves will then be passing out their manure into the soil to enrich it. And as a result of this, the soil would be better, and the end result would be the good vines will then have more oxygen, more water, and more fertilizing, and it will produce good grapes. What Isaiah is saying is this. It is reminding us that oftentimes the love of God for us can be hard love. And what hard love means is this. He would sometimes, or quite often, depending on uh, who it is, would put us through the test and would give us hard times. Even when we have done our best to obey Him and to be a good Christian, God would sometimes put us through the ringer to prepare us for even harder times. I've always used one example. About 20 years ago, Hong Kong experienced SARS. And several hundred people died, about 268 people died from SARS, and the majority of them were from Amoy <coughs> Gardens in Kowloon. The lesson we learned is that when it comes to communicable diseases, we are all responsible, not only to protect ourselves, but also to protect others around us. So when COVID came, Hong Kong responded in a very disciplined way. We did not socialize, we kept social distances, and we all wore our masks and sanitized our hands. Although a large number of people died, it wasn't as many as was predicted. So this is one very good example of how God, knowing that the COVID would come, prepared Hong Kong by a smaller hardship, SARS. And the lesson we learn spread out throughout the world, that we are responsible for each other, not only for ourselves, that the wearing of the mask is not merely to protect ourselves from being infected, but in case we are infected and we don't know it, the mask we wear protects others around us. And that is the kind of discipline that oftentimes God will impose on us. The more He loves us, very often, the harsher he will be on us when we, are, when we have done wrong. Because he knows that if we do not learn that lesson, we will ultimately be unable to face up to a greater test. Not only will we lose our lives, we will lose the kingdom of God. And the second parable of the vineyard in the gospel is God's warning to us. We are the tenant of the kingdom of God here on earth. God has given us his kingdom here on earth and we are responsible to ensure to produce foods for God. But if we do not produce fruits for God, and if we kill or disobey every messenger He sends to us, He will punish us. Because He has placed His inheritance into our hands. And in the parable, the wicked tenant killed the son of the owner. 
And history tells us, and our Bible tells us, we killed the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. And by right, we should have been punished, as in the parable. But God forgave us, because God knew that the only way He can save us is to shock us by showing how much He loves us. And if the parable talks about the tenants killing the owner's son, and St. Paul reminds us that our Lord Jesus Christ is God incarnate. And so when we killed the owner's son, when we killed and executed our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, the paradigm reminds us that we have killed God himself. Jesus Christ as the incarnate of God is willing to die for us in order to save us. And the lesson for us today to, to learn and to remember is this. If we are the vine, then we must produce good fruit. And in order to produce good fruit, oftentimes God will give us hardship in order for us to become even better. The second lesson is this. And if we are the tenants of the kingdom of God here on earth, and if we do not obey God by working hard to produce good fruits for God's kingdom and for God himself, God, in order to save us, will be willing and was willing and is willing to sacrifice himself that you and I will be forgiven and will be given a second chance. Let us remember these two lessons of our responsibilities and of God's extreme love for us to be able to even give up his own life that you and I will have life. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and say together the words of the Ninth Sing Creed as we profess the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light of light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers of intercession. You have called us to love you. You have called us to serve you. Make us worthy of our calling. May we proclaim your power and your peace. May we rejoice in your light and in your love. 
We pray for the church that is under persecution, the church at work in dangerous and dark places. We pray for churches that have lost their vision, for all who seek to bring the light of Christ to others, that we all may grow in holiness and in outreach, that we may know Christ and the power of his resurrection. We pray for all who are struggling for survival. We pray for those whose lives have collapsed around them. We remember those who have lost loved ones, possessions, homes, or work this week, all who have been robbed or stripped of their dignity, those sleeping on the streets of our cities, all who have lost hope or willpower. And here we offer up our prayers for our little brother Matthew and his parents. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would open up the hearts of Matthew and understand that regardless of how difficult his own experience and life is, we pray that you would enlighten him to see that running away will not solve his problems. But with courage and your love, he should be returning home and working out the problems he has, whether it is because of disagreement with parents and friends, or because of his ill health, or because he has difficulties in his studies that all of us, with his parents, will help him. And during this difficult time, we pray that you would be with his parents, that they will not lose hope. And all who are working very closely with his parents to seek Matthew may see your glory, that we may grow with Christ, and the power of his resurrection. We pray that our homes may be places of peace and light, that our relationships, relationships may, reflect may reflect joy and love, and love. That, that our faith may fill our, our homes and our actions, actions. That, that we may work for peace and goodwill, goodwill. that we may know Christ, and the and power, power of his resurrection. resurrection. We pray for all who are brought low by disease or sickness, for those who have been taken into care this week, for all who are terminally ill. We pray for the hospice movement and for all who care for the dying. We remember, remember all, all who have lost loved ones this week. We pray, we pray that, that we, we may be strong in our faith, faith to the last, last, that we may know Christ and, and the power of his resurrection. We pray for all who have died in faith, who know Christ and the power of the resurrection, for all who share in his victory over the grave. And in this moment of silence, we pray for those loved ones who have departed from us. May we live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting that we may know Christ and the, the power, power of, of his resurrection. resurrection. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the, for the sake, sake of, of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. We stand for the peace.
Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the Life Giver. The peace of the Triune God be always with you. And, and also, also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Peace, peace be, be with you. you. Peace, peace be, be with you. you. A reading of the anthem. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us pray. God, our sustainer, receive the gifts we bring before you and feed us continually with that bread which satisfies us all hunger, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your heavenly Father, holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal. Give us the bread of everlasting life, and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we give you thanks, most gracious God, holy and undivided Trinity, because you have given us the light of the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ, that we may grow into your likeness and be changed from glory to glory. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who will forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be the being called from the Virgin Mary, to be the Saviour and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you, in him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, 
he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of our Lord, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the first of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. being made one by the power of, spirit, of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Grant you his peace now and always. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you.
is broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Let us pray. We praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast. For here we receive you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace. And here a pledge of future glory is given, when we shall feast at that table where you reign with all your saints forever. Amen. Amen. Faithful God, May we who share this banquet glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation, life and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Amen. Please stand as we pray for God's blessing. Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are those of gentle spirit, they shall inherit the land. Blessed are you who hunger now, you shall be satisfied. Blessed are those of gentle spirit, and they shall inherit the land. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Uh, the announcements. Uh, please look at the uh, 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 the the e news that has been uh, posted onto the WhatsApp group. Uh, this week we have included all the news and pew sheets of Holy Trinity Cathedral. And so do please look at them. And there are several activities which you would be most interested to join in. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>